Hey guys, it's Kingdom Orange 2 here, and welcome back to my channel. So very similar to what I did for the Bratz franchise, today I'm going to rank the Winx Club voice actors. Now, obviously, since Winx is a much, much bigger franchise with a lot more characters, this video will probably have to be divided into two or three parts. And also, just like the Bratz video, I will also be including some live-action actors from Fate the Winx Saga as well. So yeah, let's get into it. Bloom. Number eight is Cindy Robinson. If only I had been able to find my parents, I would have really accomplished my mission. <laughs> well, of course you did. Without you, life here at the palace would be so boring. <laughs> You see, your magic power works. Cindy Robinson does some great voice work. I enjoyed her roles as both Madeline Hatter and Queen Beryl. And unlike a lot of voice actresses, she can really change her voice to sound completely different depending on what character she's playing. So I don't really understand why she chose to go with such a high-pitched and annoying voice for Bloom. I really just can't think of one redeemable quality for this voice. So let's just move on. Number seven is Emily Kramer. It's okay, Musa. Without their help, that would have been a close one. Not a star like the others. It's alive! Don't worry. Twinkly can lead us. We'll search up and down the river and figure out what's behind this. I know that in season 8, Rainbow was trying to, like, appeal the show to a younger audience, so it makes sense that Emily's voice is a lot younger sounding for Bloom. But at the end of the day, Bloom is not only the leader, but also at least 24 or 25 years old in season 8. And Emily makes Bloom sound like a scared 16-year-old. Number 6 is Angela Galupo. Our mission here on Earth might take a long time. We've got to be careful not to attract the wizard's attention. I think we should behave like real humans. We'll give the pets to anyone who'll love them. We'll also sell you all you need for your animal's care. I don't think Angela's voice is bad for Bloom, per se. It has that mature element to it, which works for Bloom's position as a mentor to Roxy in season four. I just don't think it's as good as the other voices, and Angela can sound a bit fatigued at times. Number five is Haven Pascal. You might hit the dig mole. This calls for some shock and awe. What are we waiting for? Let's go get him! The heart of Althea has grown very weak. Only your light can give it new energy. We don't know if he's human or not. Haven's voice isn't really, like, full of personality or super distinct, but for Bloom's age and role as leader of the group, I think it fits pretty good. I also can't really put my finger on it, but sometimes I feel like her voice sounds like it's cracking when she talks. Number four is Abigail Cohen. One of people think it was the first time I actually felt like myself, like, fully... I should have told you what I was doing in the stone circle, and I should have been honest with you like you were honest with me, and I'm sorry. I don't know who the hell they are, so I'm out here like a crazy person. I don't really have any complaints when it comes to Abigail's performance for Bloom. I think it was very important for the Fate Raiders to cast someone who was likable, which they accomplished with Abigail. Now, does she come across as a bit of a Mary Sue? Yes, but honestly, I feel like that's just how Bloom is sort of written, and I don't have that much of a problem with it. Number three is Helena Evangelou. Enchantix, I did it! I can't believe I got my Enchantix power! That's what we've got to find out. For the time being, nobody must know anything about what happened. We're nothing alike, Valtor. And once your fire is out, nothing will be left of you, I swear. If I was solely ranking this list based on pure nostalgia, Helena would be all the way at the top. I used to love her as a kid, and I still think she does an excellent job at making Bloom sound insecure and shy. But the problem I would see happening with Helena is that as Bloom matured in this series, I don't think Helena's voice would have been able to match that. I guess we'll never truly know because they hired Angela to play Bloom in season four, but it's worth questioning. I also hate to say this because I'm not trying to sound mean, but sometimes she sounds a little congested. Number two is Molly Quinn. Okay, Winx, we've got to rescue the workers on the rig and stop the spill. Flora, are you okay to go? Uh, Tell me where Daphne uh, is, monster. We are nothing alike, Valtor. And once your fire is out, nothing will be left of you. So the first thing I think of when I hear the name Molly Quinn is her grunting. She would always sound really aggressive whenever Bloom was using her attacks. I think Molly, though, does a great job at making Bloom sound young and age appropriate, while at the same time sounding like a leader. Now, I will say that I started to get a little irritated with her in season five and six, but I think that was more due to Nick's script and not with Molly's vocal abilities. So finally, at number one, we have Liza Jacqueline. The writing says Daphne, Bloom, Ortel, and Miriam. I'm gonna try to learn more about what happened to them, Mom. Uh, my real name is uh, Veranda of, of Ballisto. Yep, 
That's me. Common is our dragon fire. And right now, mine is going to fight yours until one of them is out. I'll be completely honest. I usually really don't like any of the four kids' voices, but I think Liza is the exception. Her voice is age appropriate for Bloom, and she does a great job at showing both Bloom's shy and insecure side, as well as her mature and commanding one. I guess we'll also never really know if Liza's voice would have fit Bloom in future seasons, but I really believe it would have translated over. Stella. Number seven is Becca or Donna's Zagorin. Look, if we're gonna be stuck in here forever, do you think we can at least get a massage? Are you talking about that dull little gathering on the quad? Bloom, you know it's not a party if you're not there. Perhaps I didn't express myself properly. I am Stella, Princess of Solaria. Uh? Becca's voice is really, really, really annoying. Now, here's the thing. Most of Stella's voice actresses have this annoying, naggy ring to them. So Becca's isn't really unique there. I just happen to think hers is the most annoying out of all of them. On top of that, the dialogue she's given in the movies, especially Mystery of the Abyss, is really cringy and unfunny. It's almost like they wanted Stella to be this comic relief in the movie, but I'm not buying it. Number six is Karen Manuel. It's not good enough! One should never settle when it comes to beauty potential. Considering you're from Earth and all, you did outstandingly splendidly, Bloom. My trunks! Those luggage elves are so huh? inept. I don't know if this is mostly people's nostalgia talking, but I think Karen gets way too much credit for her voice acting skills. Her voice is really irritating, and it's so unnaturally high-pitched. I feel like it would work well for, like, a villain or someone the audience was supposed to find annoying, but not for our main girl, Stella. Number five is Lisa Adams. You realize that horrible Kimura and her countess mother are going to be my new family? Exactly! There are just 12 hours left before my party begins, and we have a lot of things to get done! The first rule of beauty is that it requires time and preparation, so let's not dally! So I guess Lisa was, like, Karen Stanton at four kids. But in all honesty, while I do think she does a better job at voicing Stella than Karen does, I still feel like she comes across way too high-pitched and unnatural. Number four is Rebecca Solar. The golden butterfly promised us its help, and we need to trust it. Are you all thinking what I'm thinking about Lorelai? Never fear. The queen of parties is here. Hello, Super Sue. Why, hello, Stella. <laughs> I think Rebecca's voice is really great. I really loved her as Rose in Regal Academy, and I think she brings the same, you know, sort of energy and charisma that Rose's voice has onto Stella. I really have nothing to say about Rebecca's voice here, so let's just move on. Number three is Amy Gross. It takes talent, and that's something you just don't have. But I know. I'm acting like a three-year-old. What a beautiful name. I'm Stella. One second, and what do I have to deal with? Lost luggage! I know I mentioned earlier that I didn't like Stella's other high-pitched voices, but I feel like Amy's works really well. It can be way too high at times, but she makes Stella sound young and does a very good job in the scenes when Stella is acting bratty or a bit childish. Amy's voice is also girly, cute, and exciting, and I think that it works great for Stella. Number two is Hannah Vanderwest Houston. You know that girl you were talking to? Loom? She's my sweet mate. Otters holding hands. Oh. Four first years getting ready for their first party is a nightmare inside a nightmare. A lot of people hated Stella in the live action show because they thought she was too mean and that's not the way they think Stella would act. Now, I totally agree. They made Stella a total witch with a B. However, for a show that was supposed to be heavy on the drama, I think Stella acting nasty towards the rest of the wings works really well here. Hannah is stunning. Her performance was amazing. And I honestly would have loved to have seen her as Stella, even if she was a good girl. Number one is Jennifer Seguin. And I'm not waiting for anyone. I won't leave Brandon in the clutches of that fish-faced tramp. My friends need me, and I can't even transform my trunks. These luggage elves are so inept. Jennifer Seguin isn't just my favorite voice actress for Stella, but arguably, probably the best voice actress out of all of the wings. I think Jennifer does an absolutely amazing job at making Stella this overdramatic, over-the-top diva. But at the same time, Jennifer is able to portray a lot of Stella's emotions, and I feel like Jennifer's voice just sounds really natural. I'm honestly really shocked that I haven't seen Jennifer in a lot more acting roles, because I think her voice would work great for a lot of characters. Flora. Number eight is Elliot Salt. You know, um, let's all of us just blanket statement. Who cares? Like, you know, I, I like school. I like 
getting good grades and reading alone with a cup of chamomile, but you don't see anyone sharing a freaking apple with me. He's used his magic to seal the doors. You know that Elliot Salt technically played a character named Tara. However, we all know that she was going to be Flora's replacement before they added her in the second season. But even if we ignore the clear casting issues with Elliot, there were still some things I really didn't like about her performance. First of all, Tara was a bit awkward, which is fine, but I felt like Flora isn't really the awkward one in the group. That's more of Tecna's thing. I also found Tara to be really annoying at times. Like, she would make these cringy, dumb side comments, and all I wanted to do was roll my eyes. Number seven is Carrie Williams. There's no hip hop in the palace. How about rap? Cute, isn't he? My theory is that if more plants could talk, deforestation would be dramatically reduced. Well, my heart is telling me that helium might be the one. I didn't say you were. I was just asking. I know that Flora is supposed to be this innocent pacifist, but I think that Carrie's voice is just way too high and unnatural sounding. At the end of the day, Flora needs to sound like a teenager, and Carrie makes her sound like a little girl. Number six is Paulina Chavez. Trust me, falling for someone is not something to protect yourself from. Aisha. We are designed to fall in love. I'm distilling a pheromone of my magic to attract the scrapers to me. As wild as horticultural research fellows can be. I was really excited for Flora to finally appear in the second season, but I felt like Paulina's Flora just fell kind of flat. To me, I didn't feel like she had a particularly unique or really interesting personality. I also felt like she was never really fully integrated into the group, and I just wish the writers gave her more substance. Number five is Alejandro Reynoso. Bird's wings look just like the petals of a flower. You're safe at Alfia. Here, this will help with a the headache. These enchanted strawberries will attract magical creatures. Hey, I didn't say you were. You can come if you want. I don't think Alejandra's voice is terrible, but she does this thing when Flora is, like, emotional where she elongates the end of a sentence. You can hear it a bit in the clips I just played for you, but it gets really annoying. I don't know, maybe I'm being a bit overdramatic about it, but Alejandra's just not my favorite. Number four is Eileen Stevens. She's killing everything here. Mom, we'd love to continue the tour, Aww. but we have a problem. But I promise at the same time, I will be helping you! Eileen's voice is great. It has this softness to it that works really well with Flora's personality. It can be a bit mature sounding, and sometimes Eileen talks so softly that I can barely hear her, but I do think it comes off very natural, and Eileen is good at showing Flora's different emotions. Number three is Holly Gautier Frankel. See you soon, sweetie pie! Hang on tight! What if she's lost her memory? What if something happened to make her confused? Layla, would you like to see my new plants? Hey, I didn't say you were, I was just asking. So something I noticed straight off the bat was you can tell there's a difference between how Holly sounds in the first season to how she sounds in the second and third. Now I do think her voice works great with Flora's calm and mature personality, but it can be a bit too mature for Flora's age. I think if Holly would have stuck to the way Flora sounded in her first season, it would have worked a bit better. Number two is Brittany Presley. The Lilings open the door by dancing. We just have to do the same. Could I? Don't worry, little sister. I'll take you with me. Bella! <laughs> Brittany and Eileen have a very similar sounding voice, so most of the things I've said about Eileen's voice I would also apply to Brittany. The one thing I like about Brittany's voice a bit more though is that she sounds younger and softer, which works better for Flora. It's almost like Goldilocks and the Three Bears here, where it's not too old, not too young, it's just right. Number one is Stephanie She. I'm Flora, the Princess of Lymphia. My friends and I are here to see Princess Bloom. Bloom? Tecna? Layla? Stella? Can you hear me? We went looking for you because there's a problem in the infinite ocean. Mm -hmm. I absolutely love Stephanie Sha, especially as Usagi Tsukino on Sailor Moon. Now what's great about Stephanie's voice is that it sounds very natural and age appropriate. She also has this calmness to her voice but can be tough when she needs to be. I honestly really think it's a shame that we only got to hear her voice in the movies and never on the TV show. Musa. Number eight is Lisa Ortiz. Ribbon is gonna win for shiggity. Shut it before I make you shut it. Got it? I want to be with you more than anything in the world. I want to hold you close to my heart, talk to you, and hear you sing. But if I decide to go with you, the universe will be in serious trouble. I think it's one thing to have a unique voice for a character, but Lisa's voice is unique in 
all the wrong ways. I think they were trying to make Musa sound really hip and cool, but instead her voice is really annoying and irritating. I'm not a huge fan of Lisa's voice in general, but I've seen other characters she's played in the past and they aren't nearly as bad as Musa's was. Number seven is Anique Matern. Okay, there's just one problem. You belong to the wrong group. This is amazing. I thought there was a whole orchestra in here. I want to be with you more than anything in the world. I want to hold you close to my heart, talk to you, and hear you sing. I used to really love Anique's voice when I was a kid, and looking back on it, I realized that I had a lot of bias towards her. Anique's voice is just really bizarre, and it sounds a bit too old for Musa. I also don't mean to be rude to Anique, but she sounds like she's wearing braces or has something on her teeth. You can kind of hear it when she talks, but I maybe the only person that notices this. Number six is Sarah McCullo. Maybe. Uh, um, no, you didn't. I'm the one who's sorry. Really, I was just mad at someone else. I gave my first concert, and you were right. I trusted my audience, and everything else fell into place. The thing is, I don't think Riven could ever be interested in a tomboy like me. So I didn't go back and watch the entirety of season one and two, but what I remembered about Musa in those seasons was that she would constantly whine and was a bit of a crybaby. Now, I don't know if this was due to the script or just the way Sarah voiced her, but I'm honestly leaning more towards Sarah's performance. And if this is the case, I don't think Musa should have been voiced by someone who makes her an unlikable character. Number five is Alicia Applebaum. She has a lot of feelings about a lot of things, and as her roommate, I have to experience them all. Whole three minutes, wow. What do you do with all that extra time in your life? I can't feel it, I can't feel somebody I care about die. I don't really have many thoughts towards Alicia's performance as Musa. Sometimes I struggle a bit with ranking the live action actresses because I have to remember that people's personalities aren't as amplified as they are in cartoons. But since I'm rather here nor there with her acting, she's on the middle of the list. Number four is Kate Bristol. Ladies and gentlemen, we will have a brief intermission followed by a surprise guest. It's all so beautiful. Yes. It happened as soon as Annabelle's dream came true. The first thing I notice about Kate's voice is that it's pretty mellow. I think it's also age appropriate and works well for Musa. I personally tend to like the more girly voices for Musa, even though they changed Musa's personality from being the tomboy of the group to a more girly girl, but that's something I'll get to a little bit later in the ranking. It's not bad, but it's just not my favorite, so she's number four. Number three is Allison Lee Rosenfeld. The inspiration for a new song isn't coming yet. <sighs> I haven't heard from you for so long, and now that you're back, you didn't even call to tell me? Come in. Let's have that ice cream. Allison's voice doesn't really give much of an impression to it, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. It's very similar to Kate's voice, but it's a tad younger sounding, and I feel more emotion coming from her when she speaks. It's very similar to Kate's voice, but it's a tad younger sounding, and I feel a lot more emotion coming from her when she speaks, so that's why I ranked her higher. Number two is Sarah Sitto. Right. Sonar is just sound waves bouncing off of objects, and I don't mind saying... Sound is my specialty. We knew you were in Gardenia with Sky, but when we got there, we found you lying on the ground unconscious. <laughs> hey, don't play dumb, Riven. I saw you watching me all through the ceremony. <laughs> so Sarah's voice is pretty sweet and girly sounding. I think her voice has personality to it, but at the same time doesn't come across really bizarre sounding or unnatural. It also has this softness to it, which fits well with the Fairy of Music. Number one is Romy Dames. <laughs> A song my mother sang to me when I was little. It had really strange words. I'm so tired, I could literally sleep forever. I want to be with you more than anything in the world. I want to feel your arms around me. I want to laugh with you and sing together the way we used to. The entire universe is depending on me. Romy Dames is the perfect Musa, mostly because I think her voice is the most natural sounding out of all of Musa's voice actresses. It's age appropriate and it's versatile. And what I mean by that is like Romy's voice works really well for Musa when she's being girly, but also when she's more of a tomboy. It has this happy medium to it, which I love a lot, but my only complaint would be that sometimes in more emotional scenes, Romy can sound a bit weird. But other than that, she really does an excellent job. Tecna. Number seven is Sabrina Weiss. Well, I would guess this place has the power to confuse and divide us. Scanning now. Their control unit is behind that wall. Thanks, Headmistress Farragonda, but uh, We've got a problem. I don't know what specifically I hate about her voice, but I just do not like it at all. I think the way she pronounces words can be a bit weird sometimes, and her voice is just odd sounding. 
Number six is Danny Shaffle. It's PB Bugs, the latest version. It can do a digiscan. It is tall and weighs close to a ton. Its fur is bristly, not soft. It walks upright, has horns in addition to multiple clawed limbs, and it gives off a foul, musky odor. Thanks, but I know I can figure out the secret to these strange objects by myself. I really love the idea of Tekna having a British accent, but Danny's voice makes her sound like a 60-year-old British godmother and not a super smart teenager. I don't know, maybe this voice would work better for someone like Farragonda. Number five is Rebecca Solar. And since then, I've been trapped here in this horrible place, which I can tell you has not been fun at all. It doesn't look like a negatus or a transportus spell, but it might have been an illusion spell. In that case, I suggest we show them what some combined enchantix power feels like. The so quick fun fact, if you didn't notice, Rebecca was also the voice of Stella for the Do Art dub. Now again, I love the idea of Tekna having a British accent, and I think Rebecca does a better job at sounding British than Danny does, but her voice is still just way too odd sounding. Number four is Leslie Carls. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. It's two and a half meters tall and weighs close to a ton. Its fur is bristly, it has horns and multiple clawed limbs. It also has a musky odor. That's besides the point. You attend a ceremony, you dress accordingly. I kind of like Leslie's raspy voice. It definitely stands out from the rest of them. I guess my one complaint would be that it does sound a little too edgy for Tecna, because even though Tecna looks like she would be hardcore, her personality isn't really hardcore. Number three is Saskia Marleveld. Thank you, and I will become a wave of positive energy to make the heart of Zenith beat again. Hmm, maybe it can be repaired. We need some experts in techno magic. Been on Earth for months and still don't know his identity. I really like the maturity to Saskia's voice. It doesn't stand out that much from Tecna's other voices and isn't really like super unique, but I don't feel like that matters here. Number two is Morgan Decker. Walking backwards is irrational. I'm Tecna. I want to bring the dark wizards to justice, but revenge and justice are two different things. Maybe, but they will never be strong enough to beat the total power of the three of us. Morgan's voice is great. I think she does an excellent job with making Tecna sound kind of dorky and awkward, while at the same time being calm confident and serious when she needs to be. I really was going to put her first, but there was one voice I liked a little bit better. So at number one, we have Jody Rester. I don't know how many, but definitely enough to organize into these roaming gangs. Nebula's the one that wants this war. Sure, you'll get your revenge, but at what price? Maybe, but they'll never be strong enough to beat the combined power of us three. So Jody's and Morgan's voices are actually very similar to one another. I really went back and forth on whose voice I thought fit Tecna better, but it sort of came down to personal preference, and I just like Jody's voice a bit more. So now on to our last girl, we have Aisha. Number seven is Melody. Oh, knowing Stella, she's probably looking for her new trendy glasses. They may be able to win battles, but they don't stand a chance against an angry girl. Oh no, the explosion scrambled the key! I don't know whose horrible idea it was to make Aisha sound like a southern belle, but it was really an epic fail. Not only does it not rainbow. fit her personality all at all, world. but Mela makes Aisha sound very old. Number six is Eleanor Vanderberg. I heard that a little scare can trigger lost memories. It's your wristbands, right? They feed on my energy. But if I don't attack you, you've done enough today with your surprise. I don't like Eleanor's voice for Aisha either. It's too low pitched and nasally sounding. Honestly, the only reason why she's higher on this list is because it's not completely absurd sounding like Mela's is. Number five is Alicia Delarue, I think. Listen up, shaman. We're going to find the girl you took and bring her back. In case you forgot, Stella, all these shopping bags are yours. Let's attack. There are six of them, same as us. Nice try. But this buzzard belongs behind bars. Morphix Cage! I really can't put a finger on what exactly I don't like about Alicia's voice. Part of me wonders if it's her acting abilities or if I just find her voice to sound too old for Aisha. In all honesty, I probably just don't actually like the way she sounds, so I'll just leave it at that. Number four is Vashti Mom Point. I won't be able to carry you down that cliff. Uh, can you fly? Something is happening deep under the sea of Andros. Something dark. Something terrible. And no matter what we do, we can't stop him. 
Vashti's voice is pretty deep and has this harshness to it, so I think it works really well for Aisha. However, same with Alicia. I can't really put my finger on it, but there's something really strange about the way Vashti sounds. I wonder if it has something to do with how intense she talks, but maybe that's not it. I'm not really sure. Number three is Precious Mustafa. My parents run a bunch of hydro energy facilities on the border of Andros. Their plan for me was to go to school near home. They'd get mad at me for ruining the fun. I'd get mad at myself for letting that bother me. Then we'd all go to sleep angry. Oh, God, no. Great. We just have a few crises here. I really like Precious's portrayal of Aisha. I think it's great that the writers kept her sporty side, but also made her more scholarly and like a mentor to Bloom. Number two is Kiki Palmer. Hey, guys. The ceremony's about to begin. We'll avenge what those wizards did to Naboo. Even if it means I have to fight all of you. For all we know, he's unstoppable. My world, all of us, all in grave danger. It's really no surprise why Kiki is so high on this list. Her voice acting is really good, and I think she gives Aisha a lot of personality, while at the same time sounding appropriate for her age. Number one is Lucinda Davis. Sure, unless, of course, Stella ruins it for us again by making us all late. Then get out of here and let us seek our revenge! Naboo's assassins must be punished! For all we know, He's unstoppable. My world, the whole magical universe, in fact, is in danger. So when Lucinda first voiced Aisha, she made Aisha sound very young and super sweet, which doesn't really work well for her character. But if you listen to her in season four, she does a really fantastic job. Now I went back and forth between her and Kiki, but I chose Lucinda mostly due to the comparison videos made by Drawing Diamonds, and Lucinda just did a better job with her voice acting overall. All right, well, that was the longest video ever. If you've stuck around for this long, I just want you to feel free to check out both my Instagram and TikTok. It's the same username for all three, and I would love to hear your guys' opinions. Also, stick around because part two will probably be out like next month. If you like this video today and want to see more content in the future, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you guys so much for watching today, and I will see you soon. Bye!